Like the single peak preferences, now we are going to look at a different domain restriction which is quite related to the uh, single peak preferences but, is, but, but slightly different. This domain is known as the task allocation domain. Uh, as the name suggests that uh, we have one task, uh, divisible task in this case, which can be allocated among the end players that we have. Uh, so each of these players get a share of, their, of that task. Uh, which we are going to denote uh, as SI. So SI is the share of agent I and this uh, naturally uh, lives within this interval 0 to 1 and sum of the task share among all the players is going to be equal to 1. So this task is always going to be allocated so there is no, uh, no part of this job is unallocated and each of these agents should get uh, uh, some non-negative amount of uh, share of this task. Now what is an agent payoff? Um, we are going to assume that each of these agents has some most preferred share of the work. So for instance, someone likes the 50% of, uh, of this job uh, to, to be assigned to it and anything more or less will be less preferred to it. Some other agent may have a different peak, so it may uh, like 30% of the job and anything more or less will be bad. So how can we motivate this kind of a uh, task allocation domain? So you can imagine that uh, these tasks may have rewards or maybe it has wages per unit time. So let us assume that uh, if uh, a specific agent works for this TI amount of time, then it gets a constant wage for each uh, unit of that time. So WTI is the total wage that it gets uh, for working TI, TI amount of time. But at the same time, uh, the, uh, the agents have some amount of cost for working. So for instance, it could be uh, physical tiredness or maybe less free time or whatever it is. Uh, and this cost we are going to, let's say, assume um, it is quadratic. So there is a multiplier CI and as time progresses, the, the task gets harder and harder. So together the net payoff uh, in, a, in a very uh, linear way we can write it as the wage that uh, this agent gets minus the cost it incurs. So this will be CI as we have to find. So WT minus CI TI square is the net payoff that this agent gets. So you can plot the uh, payoff. So payoff on the Y axis and on the X axis if we uh, plot TI then you can see that it has a convex shape and it uh, simply has a maxima point. So this uh, maxima point is achieved at TI, uh, TI star which is given by this. So you can imagine that this uh, preference um, with respect to time or the share of this task is essentially um, a single peak. So there is exactly one peak which it, uh, it prefers the most because it maximizes its uh, payoff and uh, anything more or less will be will be uh, less attractive to this agent. So one way of pictorially depicting what is happening here is uh, is to draw the total task among different agents. So let's say we have um, agent one. It has so the the total task can be uh, shown so on the uh, y-axis. So this is zero share of the task and one share of that task. And maybe there are some n number of agents here, and uh, each of these, each of these agents have a most favorite share of this task. So maybe this red dot is showing that how much they prefer the most, and this can vary according uh, uh, with respect to different agents. And the total task, so the uh, finally will have to divide the task in such a way that uh, this dotted lines. Uh, which, which is the share of this task for among all the agents, they sum up to 1. So this amount uh, of task is nothing but SI if this is agent I. And these are, these are their peaks which, uh, which, is, which they prefer the most. 
All right. Uh, even though this is single peaked, it is not exactly the single peak with respect to the uh, the definition that we have used in the previous uh, module. So where the single peakness was, if you can order all the alternatives, it was a single peak with respect to that. Here it is single peaked, but it is on the share of the task for each of these players. So how can we actually distinguish? Let's look at this example. So suppose there are two alternatives which are uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. So there are three agents. This is the share that happens to, uh, the, this is the share that is given to each of these players. And the second alternative is 0 0.2, 0 0.6 and 0 0.2. Then player one actually likes both of them equally because the share that uh, this agent gets is exactly the same. So there is a certain amount of indifference. So this these two alternatives are indifferent to player one. So this kind of a, a preference, uh, two alternative being equally preferred is not allowed under the single picked uh, preferences. So this is single picked uh, with respect to each of each of these shares. While uh, in the earlier case, we could have ordered all the alternatives in such a way that uh, according to that common ordering of these alternatives, people had single peaks. So we are going to denote this domain of task allocation uh, with this uh, notation T. So now our social choice function is mapping this uh, task allocation domains uh, for each of these players into this set of alternatives. So um, the notation that we are going to use is this uh, Fi of P, which means that what is the share that agent I is getting and uh, the sum of all these uh, FIPs summed over P, summed over I should be equal to 1. Now, as before, we, uh, uh, we, we are going to use this peak PI, uh, which denotes that which is the most preferred share of the task for player I. Now, since we have indifferences here, so we have defined the, the notion of Pareto efficiency even in the, in the previous uh, modules, in, in the previous settings. But here we'll have to define it a little more carefully. It's slightly different. So the social choice function f is Pareto efficient. If there does not exist any other share of the task that is weakly preferred by all of the agents and strictly preferred by at least one. So remember in the, um, uh, in the uh, previous setting, the single pick setting, it was, uh, it was that um, if a specific uh, alternative is uh, dominated by some other alternative, by all the players, then that dominated uh, alternative is never going to be picked as a as the social choice outcome. That was the definition of Pareto efficiency. Here uh, we are. The alternatives are essentially share of tasks. So we'll have to uh, look at a specific share of task where we can actually find another share of task which is weakly preferred. So uh, all the agents uh, prefer at least as much as the current uh, uh, alternative and one agent uh, prefers it strictly better. If that happens, and then we say that this social choice function is not Pareto efficient. So the definition of Pareto efficiency means that there does not exist any other alternative such that that alternative actually weakly, uh, is weakly preferred than the current outcome by all the agents and there exists some agent for which that, that is strictly preferred. So this is strictly preferred. So let us uh, look at some of the implications of this task uh, allocation domain. So how can we actually make sure that this is uh, uh, this is Pareto efficient? So um, uh, what are the most natural things? So the uh, some of the peaks. So the peaks are arbitrary, and therefore we we cannot say that whether that uh, some of these peaks should be equal to one. So if that happens to be equal to one, then allocating. Uh, then the allocation problem is very simple. Yeah, one can give each of these agents their uh, favorite uh, share of this task, which is PI, and that will be uniquely uh, Pareto efficient because nobody would like to change that. Uh, anything more or less will be less preferred to them. Now, what happens if the sum of these peaks is uh, more than one? So that means there, if uh, we try to allocate uh, the the, uh, the tasks which is, uh, so uh, this task, 
uh, such that everybody gets their peak, then we will be over allocating. So the the, uh, the sum of this uh, allocated task will be more than one, which is not possible. So then there must be a, uh, must be one agent who gets less than its peak. Uh, the allocation is less than its peak. Now let us uh, ask this question: Can there be some agent J such that its allocation is more than P J, more than its uh, favorite? Uh, share of the task uh, if this uh, social choice function f is uh, Pareto efficient the answer is no because if you have so we already know that there exists at least one agent who who gets less than its peak now if so, if you give someone uh, more than its peak it also hates that uh, this agent j will hate that rather it, both of them can sh uh, transfer some of some of their shares so this agent would be better off because it gets now a little more share of the task and because it is single peak it is moving towards that peak and that will prefer that more than its current allocation similarly because this uh, agent is also shedding off some of its uh, task uh, and it is also moving towards its uh, peak which is pj uh, then it will also be happier so if cannot be pair to efficient uh, if uh, if this uh, this two uh, things happen so there cannot be any agent uh, which has which got more than its uh, uh, its peak and therefore we can conclude that for all under this condition that is if the sum of these peaks uh, is more than one uh, for every agent the allocated uh, share of the task should be at most pj cannot be more than that and similarly you can use the argument to show that when this sum is less than one uh, the share of this task should be at least PG. Okay, so the anonymity property that we have discussed before uh, again applies here, but here the the, uh, uh, the definition of anonymity is also slightly different as we uh, saw in the case of parity efficiency in this uh, in this context. So the the uh, the overall idea here is that if the agent uh, preferences are permuted, so the uh, you are you are permuting the names of the agents, meaning that, that their preferences are permuted. Then uh, anonymity says that the shares will also get permuted accordingly. So if you look at a specific permuted agent, so uh, the agent J has been permuted and the new uh, agent, uh, the permuted agent became sigma of J. And you have also looked at the P of sigma. So P of sigma is nothing but you have uh, exchanged those columns. So you have a, a favorite peak uh, and it is um, monotone decreasing. Uh, so that particular agent has actually moved it. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, the preferences. So that if that is the single peak preference over the share of this task, uh, when we have permuted the agents, that means now uh, a different agent, a permuted agent gets that kind of a preference while this agent gets something else. So uh, this that is P sigma uh, once we have permuted that. If you look at the share of that uh, permuted agent after, uh, after their preferences are also uh, transformed, this will be the same as the uh, in the original game before permutation uh, whatever that agent J was getting in the in the uh, in the original preference uh, profile it's best to take a look at an example to to understand this point let us come come here so suppose there are three agents uh, we have so after permutation agent one becomes two two becomes three and three becomes one and the original preference uh, original peaks were 0 0.7 for player one point four for uh, player two and 0.3 for player player 3 and after permutation now what happens is that uh, the uh, uh, because uh, now th uh, the third agent is now the new uh, agent 1 then agent 1's uh, peak will be the agent 3's peak in the original game so which was 0.3 that will become uh, that will come here uh, agent 2 is the first agent so that is 0 0.7 will come here and uh, uh, Agent three is the is the agent two in the original game, so uh, its preference uh, its peak comes here. Then what anonymity means is that uh, if you look at the original game, so here we have written the the right hand side first and the left hand side uh, on the uh, on the other other side. So if you look at 
player one and look at the original preference uh, profile that should be equal to the the permuted one so uh, one gets permuted into two and uh, the corresponding permuted profile and this should hold for all j so in fact uh, this is not all we can write down this for all these agents so f2 of uh, of the original preference profile will be um, f3 of the permuted profile uh, if uh, f3 of the original profile would be equal to f1 of the permuted profile so we can we can write it uh, accordingly so this inequality should hold for all j in n so let us now look at what could be some candidate social choice functions which are pareto efficient and also anonymous so uh, the first thing that we can immediately think of is serial dictatorship we have uh, thought about we have already discussed dictatorship dictatorship was in the context of uh, 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 alternatives which uh, which had only one specific alternative but there was no share so there was not no component for each of these agents uh, but here we are uh, actually dividing share so it means uh, that uh, this uh, a predetermined sequence of all these agents will be uh, given at the very beginning of this game and each agent will be given either its peak um, which which is the most preferred so they, they will come in sequence and they will pick their uh, most favorite share which is their peak or they will get a leftover share so if uh, the sum of these peaks is less than one then the last agent will, will be given the whole leftover share so um, uh, notice that in this uh, context in this uh, discussion we are only focusing on uh, deterministic mechanisms and we are not going to discuss randomized mechanisms randomized mechanisms are uh, those mechanisms where the outcome uh, is random so you do not give um, uh, a deterministic share of the of the task or deterministically pick one alternative uh, rather you uh, pick that with certain probability so we are not going to discuss that because those uh, discussions are much more difficult and the characterization in those domains are much more difficult than uh, than deterministic cases so uh, primarily we will be discussing uh, a, uh, in in this course only deterministic mechanisms at the end uh, we'll we'll see that they will give some pointers to some uh, randomized mechanisms so serial dictatorship is a deterministic mechanism deterministic social choice function it satisfies pareto efficiency why because uh, if you look at the sequence um, uh, none of these agents so because the the, the first n minus 1 agents have actually got their peak share or as long as the shares are available um, and uh, they will never like to exchange anything so anything more or less will be worse for them so therefore they will not change like to change there is no allocation which can improve their preferences for the last agent there is no choice and um, because that's the that's the last agent nobody uh, no other agent i mean uh, agents who are coming after that agent who got the leftover share they will also not like to have their share uh, but uh, and also the agents who are uh, coming before that agent uh, they will not they will not like to uh, sh uh, change their allocation either so it is pareto efficient uh, no matter whichever uh, order of this uh, serial dictatorship you choose it is strategy proof because none of these agents now have any reason to misreport their uh, their peaks because uh, if they are uh, coming in the in the beginning of the sequence they will get their uh, uh, share their most favorite share if they come uh, after the, uh, the 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 share is over or only the leftover task is uh, is pending then they don't have any choice they cannot change it by misreport so the best response for each of these agents is to uh, report their peaks truthfully. But what you can observe is that this mechanism is not anonymous because there exists a predetermined sequence and uh, all the shares are written with respect to their names. So if we change the permutation or if we rename them, then the, uh, the predetermined sequence will still go with respect to that uh, ordering which are the numbers and because now the agents have been uh, switched uh, and their uh, picks have been switched so therefore they will now get a different allocation so 
the allocation does not remain the same and that's why it is not anonymous. You can think about it a little more carefully and you can figure out that this is not anonymous. The other uh, allocation could be something like a proportional allocation. And if we have something like P, a sum of this PI is more or less than one, then we can actually um, um, either give uh, more share to all the agents or less share to all these agents. So uh, we can overload. So if uh, uh, we can we can give uh, something like a C times PI, C times their uh, uh, peak allocation uh, in in this uh, in this. Uh, proportional method so if uh, some of this pi is less than one then c will be more so that that means everybody will be given more than their peaks and if uh, some of this pi is greater than one then c will be less than one that means everybody will get less than their peak share now the question is whether this is anonymous uh, Pareto efficient and strategy proof you can easily argue that this is going to be anonymous Pareto efficient uh, for so this anonymity is coming because uh, because of the same constant. So we are either overloading or underloading all the agents in an equivalent way. So even if we uh, alter the, their uh, uh, alter their pre pre uh, their preferences and also their uh, names, then uh, the uh, the allocation will not change. It will go to the same. Uh, it will go to those permuted agents in the same share. Uh, it is also Pareto efficient because everybody is either getting underloaded or overloaded in the same way. So um, any Pareto efficient allocation um, is either uh, going uh, so giving the uh, the more share for all the agents or less share for all the agents. Uh, so there is nothing like uh, someone is getting more, someone is getting less, so that you can readjust and make everybody better off. So that is not possible. So this is also Pareto efficient. But what about strategy proofness? Now suppose we have a peak which is 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0 0.1, right? So these are the, the agent peaks for, and for these three players. And then you know that C is going to be one by 0 0.6. That is just one by some of these uh, their peaks. Now player one uh, will now get one third of this, of this task. So because C is uh, one by point, uh, point 0.6, and uh, player one's peak is 0.2 so it gets c times its peak which is one third now this is going to be more than its uh, share 0.2 which it likes more right so uh, uh, so um, one third would be uh, uh, more than that uh, it likes so uh, one by five is something that it uh, likes the most so can it change its uh, preference re report so it can actually you can i mean this is very easy to see that uh, it can actually misrepresent its uh, own peak such that the c gets altered accordingly and then in that case so c times uh, 0.1 you can actually have 1 by 5 which is uh, 0 0.2 so uh, by misreporting its uh, its preference, its peak, uh, agent one could get a better allocation, a better uh, share of this task uh, than what it is getting by by reporting it properly. So this mechanism, uh, even though it it is quite fair, it is uh, allocating it everybody are underloaded or overloaded in the same way. This mechanism is not strategic. In the next module, we are going to look at a very interesting mechanism, which is strategy proof.